टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस फोटो इलेक्ट्रिक इफेक्ट वट इज फोटो इलेक्ट्रिक इफेक्ट वट वी आर द इनिशियल एक्सपेरिमेंट्स परफॉर्मड टू स्टडी एंड ऑब्जर्व फोटो इलेक्ट्रिक फिनोमिना देयर आफ्टर दैट वील डिस्कस एक्सपेरिमेंटल सेटअप फॉर द स्टडी ऑफ फोटो इलेक्ट्रिक इफेक्ट वट वी आर द ऑब्जर्वेशन एंड वट वी आर द कंक्लूजन फ्रॉम दैट दो एक्सपेरिमेंट्स देयर देन वील डिस्कस लॉज ऑफ फोटो इलेक्ट्रिक इफेक्ट एंड आइंस्टाइन थ्योरी of photoelectric phenomena there we'll also discuss stopping potential and finally we'll see that why classical wave theory was not able to explain photoelectric phenomena there so all these we'll discuss in today's discussion photoelectric effect is the phenomena of emission of electrons from the surface of metal when the radiation of suitable frequency is incident on it so when we have radiation of suitable frequency falling on the surface of metal then electrons are ejected from its surface this this phenomena we call it as the photoelectric effect the electrons so ejected they are called as the photoelectrons the current so constituted by the photoelectrons is called as the photoelectric current and the material or the metal from the surface of which the photoelectrons are ejected they are called as the photosensitive material so here in this phenomena the radiation which is incident it should have certain minimum frequency then only the photoelectrons will be ejected so that minimum frequency of incident radiation we call it as the threshold frequency and the minimum amount of energy which is required for the ejection of photoelectrons is called as the work function these are the few uh, initial observations made by the scientists there for the study of the photoelectric effect of course that time it was not known that this is the phenomena of photoelectric emission there in fact uh, the first one if you take the hertz observation hertz was basically performing experiments for the existence of the electromagnetic waves so he noticed that in the detector unit there were more sparks observed when the cathode of that was exposed to the ultraviolet radiation so when the ultraviolet radiations were falling on the cathode in the detector unit there were more sparks observed so that means he has from this experiment or observations he concluded that there must be some extra particles coming out there and which is making this one sparks to occur more strongly there then it was the holbeck holbeck has performed a simple experiment he has taken zinc plate and connected that one to an electroscope when he made ultraviolet radiations to fall on it this is ultraviolet radiation so he found that uh, photo electrons were ejected in fact his experiment was there that when he made the ultraviolet radiations to fall on the zinc plate then zinc plate if it was initially negatively charged then it becomes less negatively charged when ultraviolet radiations fall on it or if it was uncharged initially then it becomes positively charged and if it is positively charged then on the exposure with the ultraviolet radiation it becomes more positively charged all these observations has indicated that there is decrease in the negative charge so that means some uh, particles must have come out from its surface so that there is deficiency of the negative charge so this was basically the photo electrons which were emitted that is why when it was uh, negatively charged and more photo electrons were ejected from its surface of the zinc plate in that case it becomes less negatively charged 
when it was uncharged definitely it becomes positively charged because the electrons were emitted from its surface leonard on the other hand after uh, this halvex uh, observations he performed the experiment with the quartz evacuated tube in which we have the two uh, electrodes there and uh, when he made the ultraviolet radiations to fall on the negative plate in that case he observed that there is a current flowing in the circuit and when this uh, exposure of ultraviolet radiation was uh, stopped the current also stops so that means it is not only just the potential difference due to which we are getting this one but it has definitely the impact of this ultraviolet radiation because when it is incident then only we observe this radiation there that means the current flowing in the circuit there when uh, this ultraviolet radiations fall on this one then only you have the current flowing in the circuit and of course in the other case when there is a exposure stop then there is no current flowing there in the circuit so then holwack and leonard are uh, performed uh, experiments and uh, they have done a more detailed study of the photoelectric phenomena there this is the experimental setup for the study of photoelectric effect here we have the evacuated class tube this one has two electrodes connected there two metal plates are connected there so one is your c and this is your a c is the one from which uh, photoelectrons will be ejected these are basically the one uh, which are emitting those electrons once the radiation of suitable frequency is incident on it here it is connected to a uh, source with the potential divider this is the reversing key and this is the voltmeter which will measure the potential difference between the two plates here and uh, this is the micro ammeter with the help of which will measure what is the current flowing in the circuit this uh, w represents the window there through which the radiation will be incident and they will be falling on this uh, c that is the plate c and then the photoelectrons will be ejected in the experimental study we want to find out how the photoelectric current is affected when there is a change in the potential difference between the two plates here so that means for that we need to change the potential difference so we have the potential divider here and to measure the potential difference we have the voltmeter connected so this is one part then we may uh, change the polarity also that means suppose we are making this one uh positive this is negative there we are increasing the potential of this we may try to find out that what will happen if it decreases its potential and it becomes even less than that of c that is of the cathode what is the effect there so that is why we need a reversing key here so this reversing key will indicate that uh, if you want to change the direction of current we'll just simply change the direction of the current in the circuit there that means the polarity will just get changed so in that case you can study what is the effect of the reversing this potential on the current which is flowing in the circuit there also uh, we will see that uh, if we change the intensity of the incident radiation what is its effect on the current if we are changing suppose our uh, intensity by keeping the frequency fixed what is the effect or if we keep the frequency changed but intensity is same in that case what is the effect so all these were the different parts of the experimental study so let's first take the effect of intensity on photoelectric current so first we take effect of intensity on photoelectric current electric current now here what we find that uh, photoelectric current 
increases linearly with increase in the intensity. That means if you take the intensity here on x-axis and this is the photoelectric current, electric current, then this one will give you a graph which is a straight line indicating that if intensity of the incident radiation is increased, then the photoelectric current will also go on increasing. Another is the effect of potential. Let us now take effect of potential on photoelectric current. That means when we are changing the potential difference between the two, what is its effect on the photoelectric current? So what we find that the graph, if you plot for the potential and photoelectric current, it is like this. That means it is indicating that uh, here V value, that is the potential is zero, but there is some current there. So if there is current, it means even if you do not apply any potential here, then definitely few electrons are able to reach the other plate. And these will be the most energetic electrons there, which is ejected from its surface, that is the photoelectrons. So they will constitute some current in the circuit. So here, if you suppose you increase the potential, now there will be a positive potential here. So it will be attracting the electrons, which is have been ejected from the other plate. So now the number of electrons reaching the other plate will increase. So the photoelectric current will increase. You increase the uh, potential further, definitely the photoelectric current will go on increasing. But after some time, that means after some particular potential, this will become constant. Now why it will become constant? Suppose the radiation which is incident is able to eject 100 electrons per second. And when we do not apply any potential, there are only 10 electrons able to reach the other plate in one second. So there will be some current there because 10 electrons per second are reaching there. So there will be some current. When you increase the potential, you make this one more positive. In that case, it will attract more number of electrons. So if earlier it was only 10, now it may be 20, 30, 50. So that way the number of electrons reaching per second on the other plate will go on increasing. So photoelectric current will also increase. But that way if you are increasing the potential, a time will definitely come when the potential will become so strong that it will be able to attract all the electrons which are ejected per second from the other plate. Like if 100 electrons were ejected per second, it is able to attract all those 100 electrons in one second. So in that case, it will reach the saturation value. If you increase the potential further, the number of electrons reaching the other plate will not increase because it was only 100 which is being ejected per second and all were able to reach there. So there will be no change in the photoelectric current and it will acquire saturation. Now, suppose we make this potential negative. If you have increased the potential, photoelectric current was in increasing initially and then it has acquired saturation. When there is no potential, then also there was some current. But when we make this plate negative with respect to this one, that means what will happen? The ejected electrons will now experience repulsive force. As they will experience repulsive force, so if 10 most energetic one were able to reach the other plate when there was no potential applied due to the negative potential applied here with respect to this one. Now it may be only 5 be able to reach there in one second. So the photoelectric current will decrease. So that way the photoelectric current will go on decreasing if you are increasing this potential with negative sign. That means you are reversing the potential there. And a time will come for a particular pot negative potential applied here, there will be no electron able to reach the other plate. Suppose the potential is uh, that, that it is making all the electrons which are ejected from the surface, their all amount of energy or the whole amount of energy which they are possessed is being used in overcoming the 
force or the field which is applied here. So in that case, they will be just ejected, but they will not be able to move because their velocity will become zero. Entire amount of energy possessed by them is used in overcoming the opposite potential which has been applied there. So the photoelectric current will become zero and that particular potential we call it as the stopping potential. So this V0 represents the stopping potential. That means it is the negative potential applied on this plate, which will make the photoelectric current zero or at that particular potential, the photoelectrons are just ejected. Remember the photoelectrons are ejected, but they will be just ejected in the sense that their velocity will be zero there. So obviously there will be no photoelectric current there in the circuit. So this is the plot of the potential and photoelectric current. Now suppose we take the frequency of the radiation which is incident fixed. Frequency of the incident radiation which is falling on it is fixed and we are changing the intensity. So if you increase the intensity in that case what will happen? The foot, This graph will get shifted like this. That means if this is your E1, this is your E2. That means if the intensity is increased, this graph will get shifted. That means there will be more because we have seen in the previous case that if intensity is increasing, then photoelectric current will also increase. So obviously, if the intensity has increased, definitely there will be more photoelectric current there. But as the frequency is fixed, the stopping potential will remain same. Similarly, if you increase the potential further, then again it will get shifted. It is like this. And here I3 is greater than I2 greater than I1. That means intensity of the third one is more than that of second and that of the first. Here intensity we have changed, but frequency of the radiation was fixed. So that means this is the plot for same frequency of incident radiation, but of different intensity. Intensity we have changed, but the frequency we have kept fixed. So this is the plot. Let's now take the case when we keep the intensity fixed, but we change the frequency of the incident radiation. So for a particular frequency of incident radiation and a particular intensity, the graph is like this. And it is uh, indicating the stopping potential, suppose as V0, 1. Now suppose we keep the intensity fixed, but we change the frequency. We are increasing the frequency. So in that case, what will happen? The graph will get shifted like this. This is suppose for nu1, the second one is for nu2 and this is for frequency nu3. The stopping potential will be like minus this, minus v0 2 and this is your say minus v0 3. And nu1, nu2, nu3 relation if you take nu3 is greater than nu2 greater than nu1. That means if you are increasing the frequency of the incident radiation, in that case the stopping potential will go on increasing. So this is the plot for different same intensity but different frequency of incident radiation. Frequency of incident radiation. So this was uh, found there in uh, his experimental observation. Of course, one basic observation was there that when the radiations are incident on the surface of photosensitive material or certain metals there, then the photoelectrons are ejected only when the incident radiation has a frequency more than certain minimum frequency. So for a particular metal, for a particular photosensitive material, it has a particular frequency of incident radiation required 
then only the photoelectrons will be ejected. If the incident radiation has frequency less than the threshold frequency or that minimum frequency, in that particular case, no photoelectrons will be ejected. No matter how long you expose that, no matter how strong the intensity of the radiation is. It will be ejected only if the incident radiation has frequency more than the certain minimum frequency that we call it as the threshold frequency. So these were the experimental setup there and the observations what we get in this photoelectric effect study. Laws of photoelectric emission. The photoelectric current or the number of photoelectrons ejected per second is directly proportional to the intensity of incident radiation provided it has frequency more than certain minimum frequency for the given metal surface. On a particular metal surface, if the radiation is incident, first thing is that it should have the frequency more than certain minimum frequency that is the threshold frequency. So there the photoelectric current will be directly proportional to the intensity. Here it will not depend upon their frequency in the sense that means uh, it should have the frequency more than certain minimum frequency but this photoelectric current will be depending only on the intensity there of the incident radiation. And second is that the maximum kinetic energy of the ejected electrons is directly proportional to the frequency of incident radiation provided that it is uh, more than certain minimum frequency or threshold frequency for the given metal surface and it is independent of the intensity of incident radiation. Normally what happens we expect that photoelectric current will be depending upon the frequency of the radiation but it depends upon the intensity. Secondly, we expect that the kinetic energy of the ejected electrons should depend upon the intensity but basically it depends upon the frequency of the incident radiation there. Of course, in all these cases, we are assuming that the radiation which is incident has frequency more than threshold frequency. Of course, in uh, many books you will find that one also written as a law but this is not a law, it is an observation. Because if suppose you have to verify the laws of photoelectric emission, in that case you will be basically verifying these two. Of course, one more very important observation is there that the ejection of photoelectrons is an instantaneous process. This is very, very important. Because this one has led to the failure of the wave theory. So here what we are taking that the ejection of the photoelectrons is an instantaneous process. The moment the radiation is incident immediately the photoelectrons are ejected there. So these were the laws of the photoelectric emission there. Let us now take uh, Einstein theory of photoelectric emission. Einstein has assumed this is basically an interaction between the photon of the incident radiation and the electrons of the metal surface which is getting emitted. So first part is there, it is the photon interacting with the electrons there. And second thing is there that the photons, each photon will interact with only one electron there. When the radiation is incident, in that case what happens it will be having some energy so in that case it will try to interact with the electrons and electrons will once they will receive that energy they can come out of its surface but for that ejection it requires certain minimum frequency of the radiation to be incident so when a particular radiation is incident of suitable frequency that means it should have the frequency more than threshold frequency a part of that incident energy will be used in ejecting photoelectrons and the remaining amount of energy will appear in the form of the kinetic energy of the ejected electron let's suppose we have 
H nu as the energy of the incident radiation. This one is falling on the surface of the metal. So this one will a part of this incident radiation will be used in ejecting electrons that we call it as the work function that is the minimum amount of energy required for the ejection of electrons. So this is your W naught plus remaining amount will appear in the form of the kinetic energy of the ejected electrons. Of course, we take that one that it should have the maximum value of that kinetic energy. Let's do it uh, further. H nu we have taken as the energy of the incident radiation. Work function, we can write it as your H nu naught. This is nu naught is the threshold frequency. This plus half m v max whole square. That is the maximum value of the kinetic energy here. So this is your Einstein equation. Einstein's photoelectric equation. Now we can get uh, many conclusions, many expressions from this one. Like first, let's take uh, this way uh, h nu minus nu naught. We are transferring it on the other side, this one. This is your half m v square, of course, v max square. If we consider that if nu is greater than nu naught, what will happen? This kinetic energy will have the positive value. So this will indicate that the kinetic energy is greater than zero. So the photoelectrons are ejected with some kinetic energy. That will be the conclusion we get. So photoelectrons are ejected. Photoelectrons are ejected with some kinetic energy. Let's take the second case. If nu is equals to nu naught, if nu is equals to nu naught, what will happen? This term will become zero. And if this is zero, that means it is indicating that kinetic energy is zero. Kinetic energy zero means photoelectrons are just ejected. So they will be just ejected there. That means they will have the velocity zero. Third case, if nu is less than nu naught, then what will happen? This term will become negative. So this is indicating that kinetic energy is less than zero. What does that indicate? Kinetic energy less than zero means it is your half mv square being less than zero. That means v square is negative. And that means it will be an imaginary quantity. So that indicates that no photoelectrons are ejected. Because v square, if it is negative, that means if you take the value of v, it will be an imaginary one. That means electrons or the photoelectrons will not get ejected there. So these are some of the conclusions which we can get from this Einstein photoelectric equation. We can now write this Einstein equation in some other forms also. Like if you write it in terms of the wavelength, in that case it is nu is your c by lambda and it is your c by lambda naught. This is your half m v max square. That means it is your hc 1 by lambda minus lambda naught. This is also half m v max square. So it is in terms of the wavelength. So this lambda naught will indicate the threshold wavelength there. Lambda will represent the wavelength of the radiation which is incident there. Many times when you get numericals there based on this one, at times you'll be given the expression in the form of uh, the data there in the form of wavelength. At times it will be in frequency there. So you should know all these expressions there so that whatever data is given, you can use the corresponding equation there for the simplification and get the final result what is asked. Let's now take a stopping potential. A stopping potential we have defined that it is the negative potential 
that is to be applied so that it makes the photoelectrons to just get ejected or that one will make the photoelectric current zero that also we can see because if the photoelectrons are just ejected they are not moving there will be no photoelectric current there so in both way we can define this one now let's see uh, how we get the expression for this stopping potential suppose uh, e is the charge on the electron or the photoelectrons and uh, v not we take it as the stopping potential so e into v not will indicate the energy which is uh, associated with this negative potential or the stopping potential that means the photoelectrons which are ejected will have to do work due of this much amount to overcome this reversing potential and suppose i assume that uh, the kinetic energy of the ejected electrons is your half mv square that means it's this entire kinetic energy will be used in doing work against this stopping potential where the energy required to do work against this stopping potential will be your ev not kinetic energy is half mv square so these two should be equal so this will be the basic relation between stopping potential and the kinetic energy there in fact it is your ev not that is equal to kinetic energy now from einstein equation uh, we know that uh, h nu minus h nu not that was your half mv square of course v max v right but this is the expression there so that means if i substitute it here then what will get h nu minus h nu not this is your e v not or v not we can write h by e nu minus h nu not by e this will be the expression now you see that this h by e this is a constant planck's this is your Planck's constant and this is your charge on the electron. So this is a constant. Here also H nu naught will be constant for a given material there and E is the charge on the electron. So this is also constant. So here the variables are like frequency and the corresponding stopping potential there. So this will be in the form of equation of a straight line. And it is basically in the form y equals to mx plus c. So this one gives you relation between the stopping potential and the frequency of the incident radiation. And this will be basically uh, a graph of a straight line because the equation will be like in the form y equals to mx plus c. If you plot this graph, like suppose if you take a stopping potential and frequency there and we are plotting it suppose the frequency is here on x axis on y axis we have the stopping potential because it is your y equals to mx plus c so its graph will be like this it will be a straight line and this will indicate a now this is the graph and if you produce it in the backward direction it will be reach, meeting here at the point a here you can see that uh, if i assume v not zero that means a stopping potential you are taking zero there where it will be zero in that case you can get this particular one from this one graph there that at what point this uh, stopping potential is becoming zero at this one so here if you consider the frequency and what is the frequency here this is your new naught so here see if your incident radiation has frequency new naught in that case what will happen this h new naught by e this is minus h nu naught by e so v naught will be zero now what other thing what we can get from this one this graph 
this is in place of m so that slope of this graph this is your h by e that means if you take the tan theta in that case it is your h by e whereas y intercept y intercept this will be is your oa this is your y intercept and how much is this one this is your magnitude wise it is your h nu naught by e or w naught by e many times uh, you may be asked from to plot the graph or you may be asked by plotting the graph how will you find the Planck's constant from the graph or work function from the graph. So if it is asked to find Planck's constant, we know that slope is equals to h by e. So h value will be how much? This will indicate that h is equals to slope multiplied by e. Similarly, if it is asked what is the work function? So for work function w naught, it will be y intercept intercept multiplied by e. So from that we can get the work function. So this is the plot of the stopping potential and frequency and how we can use this one to find Planck's constant or work function from the graph. Let's now discuss failure of classical wave theory. Like initially it was uh, believed that light has got particle na nature uh, that was given by the Newton in his course particular theory and uh, he was able to explain initially the phenomena of the reflection and reflection using his corpuscular theory but then uh, there were many phenomena known uh, which are indicated only by or which are represented or shown only by the waves like the interference diffraction and other and light was showing these phenomena so then they tried to find out that whether the light has got wave nature or not. So Heisen has given the theory and from his theory, he has proposed that light has got the wave nature and in his theory or using his theory, he was able to explain not only these complex phenomena like interference diffraction, but he has also proved the basic uh, laws shown there for the reflection and refraction. So we can prove laws of reflection and refraction using Heisen's theory. But then this particular phenomena, photoelectric effect, if you try to explain from wave theory, we find that wave theory is not sufficient to explain this one. Because here what we find that if the radiation is incident on the particular surface there of a metal, in that case, using wave theory, if the radiation has a particular energy there, in that case, the electrons there, they will absorb that energy, they will go to higher state and after that they will get ejected. So there will be some time lag between the two. That is the time when the radiation is incident and when the electrons gets ejected. But what we find that the photoelectric emission is an instantaneous process. It happens instantly there. So obviously we cannot explain it from the wave nature there. Second thing was there, if the incident radiation has frequency less than threshold frequency. In that case, from wave theory, we find that its energy will be less the electrons there present on the surface of the metal, they will be getting that energy, they will absorb that and if the radiation is uh, incident there for a longer duration of time, the electron should be able to get the sufficient amount of energy which is required for their ejection. So that means if the incident radiation has frequency less than threshold frequency, then from wave theory we find that electrons will definitely get ejected. Of course, it may take a longer time there. But what is found there? Here we find 
that if the radiation has frequency less than threshold frequency, no matter how long you expose that material, photoelectrons will never get ejected. So this is again from wave theory, we cannot explain that. Second thing uh, was there that the radiation which is falling on it, if the intensity is more, in that case, it means it is the energy falling per unit area, per unit uh, time that will be more there from the classical wave theory if you consider. So in that case, the ejected electrons should have more energy there, kinetic energy, if the intensity is more. But what we find that if intensity is more, then the photoelectric current will be more not the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy will depend upon the frequency of the incident radiation, not on the intensity there directly. So obviously here with the classical wave theory, we are not able to explain this phenomena. That is the wave nature. There from wave nature, we cannot explain phenomena of photoelectric emission. So this was there in photoelectric uh, effect photoelectric phenomena and the failures of the classical wave theory there. What Einstein has proposed, he has proposed that light has got the particle nature that is they have the quanta that is the minimum energy associated there that he is calling at that as the photon there which was assumed that it is having the small packets of energy. Each photon will be interacting with only one electron there. So that is why when it is falling there on the surface, it is able to eject the electrons instantly, provided this photon has a frequency more than the threshold frequency there. If the energy is more in that case, uh, here if the suppose intensity is more, it means the number of photons falling per unit time, per unit area of cross section that will also be more. So obviously it will interact with more number of photoelectrons, more photoelectrons will be ejected and the photoelectric current will be more there. So this is all about the photoelectric phenomena.